Hi, I'm Paul from PSI Marine. I'm gonna give you some essential maintenance tips for your electrical system on your vessel. Your battery system is essential. It's the heart of your boat. Periodically during the year, make sure you check your battery system. It's always an excellent idea to disconnect all of the terminals from the batteries before you attempt any work. Before disconnecting these cables, please ensure that you have unplugged your cable from the shore power so that that stops your mains power charger from working. Also, if you have any solar or wind charging on the vessel, make sure that this is isolated at the same time as well to ensure that once you've disconnected the batteries, those cables are safe. And then beyond that, you can work on the electrical system without any risk. So one of the tests that you could do on your batteries to ensure that they're in good working order is a battery drop test. A drop tester is easily available from, from most electrical shops and automotive shops will have battery drop testers. However, what you need to do is make sure that you disconnect all the batteries so that you're testing each battery individually rather than testing collectively as a bank. While you're there checking your battery system, make sure that all of the connections to the top of all of your batteries are nice and tight, nice and secure, and that they can't be moved around. So it's a good idea to run the engine peri periodically when you're not using the boat, just to keep everything warm and everything moving around in here. Also, when you get an opportunity to look in here, it's a good idea to cast a torch over some of the electrical parts and the wiring harnesses that go from here up to the control panel. Especially look at the alternator, which is generally located just aft, just behind the belts that are at the front of the engine to make sure that all of the connections to the back of it are clean, there's no corrosion and there are no frayed cables. Below that or beyond that, there's the starter motor. Again, looking at the terminals on the starter motor to make sure that they're clean and there's no corrosion or frayed cables. This also gives you an opportunity to check the engine to ensure that there are no water leaks. Any water leaked into the engine or the engine bay could then cause moisture to move around the engine bay, causing problems on your electrical system. Okay, so this is the DC breaker panel in this particular vessel. Each of these switches here are what's known as thermal cutouts. If there's a problem on any of these circuits, these switches would automatically turn themselves off. That indicates that there's a fault on it. Sometimes they can be turned off by accident. Sometimes a single event can cause them to trip. If you can reset it and everything works as, it, as you would expect it to, then it will be absolutely fine. If it continues to cut out, then it does mean that there's a fault on the circuit somewhere that does need some further investigation. And generally it's a good idea to get an electrician on board to come and do that for you. When you come in, another good practice is to always rinse your anchor windlass all through with fresh water. You get a lot of salt water build up where the anchor's being put out and draw back in again. Always flush that through with clean, fresh water after any use to make sure that there's no salt build up in that. Salt can build up on the cabling and the motor below and cause it to degrade and break down. Another final thing to check would be any electrical cabling coming down from the mast, going into the boat. It's a good indication um, of the condition of your mast cabling can be done at the base of the mast where it's exposed and easy to get to. Fortunately, this one's protected quite well with conduit and self amalgamating tape where it goes into the swan neck to take it inside the boat. But we can open up the conduit to get to the cabling inside to sort of gauge an idea of what sort of condition it is in. What we're looking for here are breaks or fractures in the outer sheath, any exposure of the internal cable inside or Generally, uh, a sign that these are breaking down is that the outer sheathing goes quite hard and becomes inflexible. On this particular boat, the cables are in very good condition, all very flexible, all move around quite well, so it would indicate that the mast cabling on this vessel is in good condition. So this is the job for a marine electrician if you're not happy at dealing with this cabling yourself.